For more than four decades, Voyager 2 has been drifting quietly into the abyss, far beyond the reach of planets, past the frozen edge of our solar system, into the great unknown. It is a ghost ship of metal and wires, guided only by Earth's faint whisper from the late 1970s. Back then, when it launched, humanity thought it would fade quietly into the background, its signal slowly dimming until it was nothing more than static, indistinguishable from the cosmic noise that fills the void. But Voyager 2 did not fade. It endured. And recently, against all odds, it sent something back. Not just ordinary data. Not a routine transmission. What it sent was a message that made NASA scientists pause, a sudden spike, an unexpected shift a clear line that was crossed. And with that line came confirmation of something humanity had always feared but never dared to say out loud. The edge of our solar system is not a blur. It is not a slow dissolve into the wider galaxy. It is a wall. And beyond that wall, everything changes. When Voyager 2 crossed what is known as the heliopause, the boundary where the influence of the sun finally ends and true interstellar space begins, the expectation was that the transition would be gradual, almost poetic, like a slow fading sunset. Scientists believed that the solar wind, a river of particles streaming endlessly from the sun, would gradually thin, dissolving into the interstellar medium like mist vanishing in the morning air. But what Voyager 2 revealed was the opposite. The transition was not smooth. It was abrupt, sharp, unmistakable. One moment the probe was inside the sun's protective bubble, and the next, it was completely beyond it. In that instant, radiation levels spiked by more than 70%, plasma density jumped to unexpected levels, and the very structure of the magnetic field surrounding the spacecraft shifted dramatically. It was as if a door had opened and Voyager 2 had stepped into an entirely new room, one with rules humanity had never encountered before. What stunned scientists most was not just the existence of a boundary but the precision of it. For decades, textbooks and models painted the heliosphere as a soft, fading edge, bleeding slowly into space. Voyager 2 shattered that vision. Instead, it revealed a shield-like structure, a distinct membrane that had been holding back the chaos of the galaxy. And as Voyager pierced through, it became clear that our solar system is not drifting aimlessly in space. It is wrapped, cocooned, protected by something real, and that protection has limits. The discovery was breathtaking and terrifying all at once. Inside this shield, life had relative safety. The radiation was filtered, space weather was moderated, cosmic rays diminished to survivable levels. But the moment Voyager 2 stepped beyond that veil, all of that changed. The spacecraft was instantly bombarded by intense particle storms, chaotic fluctuations in magnetic energy, and dangerous levels of galactic radiation. What had once been thought of as the peaceful emptiness of space was now revealed as a hostile frontier. The smooth curves drawn in scientific illustrations dissolved, replaced with harsh data, jagged lines, and disturbing implications. Suddenly, the solar system appeared less like a drifting outpost and more like a fortress, and stepping beyond its walls meant entering an unpredictable wilderness. Voyager 2 was not just drifting anymore. It was under siege. The sun's magnetic field had aligned almost perfectly with the galactic magnetic field outside, something no one predicted, something that should have been nearly impossible. This alignment raised profound questions about how the galaxy itself shapes the space around us, questions that remain unanswered. The heliosphere was no longer just a field. It was a threshold. And thresholds are not passive. They demand something when crossed. What Voyager revealed next was even more unsettling. The heliosphere is not fixed. It breathes. It moves. It shifts with the rhythm of the sun's 11-year cycle, swelling during times of solar strength and shrinking when the sun weakens. 
Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 crossed the heliopause at different places and different distances, and the differences were not random. They were shaped by this solar rhythm. That means the boundary of our solar system is not a neat bubble at all, but distorted, comet-shaped, pulsing outward and inward like the breath of some giant, unseen creature. Sometimes the wall stretches outward, giving us more protection. Sometimes it shrinks, pulling danger closer to Earth. And in its weakest moments, more cosmic radiation can slip through, seeding chaos inside our solar neighborhood. The implications are chilling. Our protection is not permanent. It is fragile. It can fail. And Voyager's data showed just how thin that veil truly is. Then something even stranger happened. In 2019, Voyager 2, which had been astonishingly reliable for over 40 years, suddenly went silent. For hours, every instrument went offline. No commands were sent. No signals were received. The spacecraft was dark. And then, just as mysteriously, it came back. Systems restored. Communication resumed. The official explanation given to the public was simple, aging hardware, maybe a minor glitch. But buried deep in the technical reports were notes of unexplained electromagnetic spikes recorded just before the blackout, fluctuations in the magnetic field, sharp surges in particle energy. Small, yes, but strange enough to raise questions. Some scientists suggested it had passed through a dense pocket of plasma, Maybe the echo of a distant supernova or a shockwave from a stellar event light years away. But others whispered about something far more unsettling. That Voyager 2 had brushed against a layer we did not even know existed. A hidden structure, invisible and unpredictable, one that reacted violently to the spacecraft's presence. If true, then this was no mere glitch. It was a response. The data Voyager continued to send only deepened the mystery. Beyond the heliosphere, it recorded persistent fluctuations in radiation and plasma density, not random noise but patterned disturbances, repeating in a rhythm that felt strangely familiar. It was as though the void itself had weather, waves, storms, invisible currents that pushed and pulled against the tiny spacecraft. Scientists struggled to explain it. Could these fluctuations be the distant echoes of ancient stellar explosions? Could they be vast galactic winds sculpting the medium between stars? Or were they signs of something more complex, an environment we had only just begun to glimpse? Voyager, drifting silently, was now fully exposed in a storm we never expected to find. Even more unnerving was the magnetic alignment. Instead of the turbulent chaos that models predicted, the galactic magnetic field and the sun's field were in near-perfect harmony at the boundary. It was too clean, too smooth, too organized. Two unsettling possibilities arose. Either the sun's outflow had shaped the region around it over eons, sculpting the interstellar medium into this alignment, or the alignment was already there, baked into the fabric of this region of the galaxy. The second possibility is far more disturbing, because it suggests our solar system resides within a larger, pre-structured order, an order we barely understand. And then came the most provocative whispers among theorists. What if the heliopause is not simply a physical shield? What if it behaves like a checkpoint? The sharpness of the transition, the patterns, the perfect alignment, all suggested structure, responsiveness. Could it be that every object leaving the sun's domain is exposed, measured, catalogued? That the edge of the solar system is not simply a barrier, but a kind of galactic tripwire? Not a claim of aliens, not an assertion of intelligent design, but the possibility that the fabric of the galaxy itself is reactive, layered, watching. If true, then Voyager 2 did more than leave home. It announced us. It declared our presence to the universe beyond. And attached to Voyager 2 is humanity's golden calling card, the golden record. 
A disc of gold-plated copper, etched with our greetings, our sounds, our music, our knowledge, and most importantly, a map. A set of directions to Earth. For decades, it was seen as a hopeful gesture, a symbol of our optimism and our desire for connection. But now, in light of what Voyager found, some view it differently. If the boundary reacts, if it reveals intruders, if it announces them, then what did we do by attaching the map to our very first probe to cross it? Did we extend a hand, or reveal our vulnerability? The golden record is not just a message. It may be an invitation. One we cannot take back. Voyager 2 was never supposed to last this long. It was not designed to send back revelations that would shake the foundations of astrophysics and challenge our understanding of the cosmos. Yet here we are, decades later, still receiving its whispers. And those whispers tell us that the edge of our home is far stranger than we ever imagined. It is not soft. It is not fading. It is sharp. It is alive. And beyond it lies a frontier that feels less like emptiness and more like a gate. A gate into a realm that is vast, hostile, reactive, and watching. And so the question lingers, as Voyager continues its lonely journey into the abyss. Was it simply an explorer, bravely charting new waters, or was it, without us realizing, a signal flare announcing humanity's presence to a galaxy we do not yet understand?